Morgan Stanley out with a report on uneven access to venture capital, and it finds investors may be missing out on trillions of dollars in revenue. Joining us right now is Carla Harris. She's Morgan Stanley's vice chairman and managing director uh, and senior client advisor. Good morning to you. Thanks Good for morning. being here. Uh, you guys, this study is actually very fascinating because it really does sort of get at this idea of, I don't know if it's unintentional bias or just bias in a way that I, I, I thought was actually surprising. Uh, you say that nearly 80% of people, investors, this is, think that minorities and women uh, and business owners get either appropriate amount of capital or more, meaning so they think everything is good. Mm -hmm. And yet when you look at the median investment by equity investors of all businesses, it's nearly a million dollars. But those that are owned by women is only $213,000 for minority owned companies. It's $185,000. When you did the reveal, if you will, I don't know if you did that when you were doing this study, to those who thought everything was cool, what was the reaction? People were surprised, and, and frankly, we were surprised when we saw this because there's lots of data out there that talks about the fact that only 4% of VC dollars go to women and less than 2% go to people of color. So it was interesting to hear investors say that about themselves. But that's part of the reason that we did this report, so that people could really see what the reality was relative to the perception. Because if we can marry the two at the end of the day, then I think we can start to see change in this space. And so the idea, of course, is to get investors to say, okay, we have to, we have to relook at this space, right? That's that's absolutely right. And that's one of the reasons that we made it very statistic heavy, because those who don't get it will hug the data, so we have the data here. And that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is to really say, listen, you're assigning way more risk to women and people of color that are entrepreneurs than is warranted. And you know, if you don't know anything about this space and you see how little capital goes into this space, you would conclude that perhaps the market thinks that there's disproportionate risk. And what we're trying to do is to debunk that. And so, but here's the question. If you're a big pension fund, do you want pension funds and other big investors to actually bucket, create specific buckets for women and minority-led funds? Is that is that the the trick, or, or is it just to change the overall thought process about this issue? It's to change the process. We very specifically say we're not talking about quotas, we're talking about targets, because as you know, you can manage what you measure. So if you are intentional about saying, we were going to make sure that we see X number of companies that are founded by women or that are founded by people of color and you are intentional about it, right. eventually you will find yourself doing it as a matter of course. And that's really what we advocate, targets, not quotas. Can I ask you to weigh in on a debate? There's been a lot of writing over the past couple of weeks about Sheryl Sandberg and, and her role as a female in the business world, uh, to some degree put up on a pedestal and perhaps over the past couple of weeks knocked off that pedestal. Um, and whether that is fair. And the reason I ask it is because you have a lot of women, especially female investors, female executives, who, who say, you know, we had this person who was sort of, a, a, I don't know, a, sort of a leader in this space and that it would almost um, created sort of an, uh, an expectation that was almost too high about what was possible. Not, not, not that, that, that she didn't deserve that role, but that somehow if you have women in these roles, somehow everything's gonna go uh, so much better than it would if a man was in that role. Well, I think that Cheryl has done a phenomenal job and every leader has his or her challenges. So I don't think that it's, you know, it's unfair, nor do I think that she's been, quote, knocked off the pedestal. This has been a challenging time for the organization, but all companies go through their challenging times. So I don't think there's anything off of the mark. So I think it would be unfair right. to judge her in a way that is different than any other leader that's at the top of an organization. The, the, the reason I, I guess I ask it is there's a big issue about causation and correlation between perform, out, out performance, right? One of the things that's happened over the past couple of years is you see study after study after study saying, you know, if you have more women ah. uh, at the table, it's going to have a very different outcome, mm -hmm. right? And then there are people now that point to the Sheryl Sandberg situation and say, actually, you're going to have the same, it's, it's the same outcome. And the ah. question is whether the causation and correlation are, whether it's causation or correlation. But I think, I think you're actually, or whoever would say that, is actually confusing the macro with the micro, right? Because the data that says having more women on your board, 
more women in your C-suite leads to better decisions. That's day by day by day by day. We're now talking about an incident, right? So right. that's why I say macro versus micro. And I wholeheartedly believe that the more diversity that you have at your decision-making table, the better decisions you're going to make because you then can account for all of the potential gaps. If you have a homogenous way of thinking, you're obviously going to miss something because look at the world around you. Look at your consumer base. Look at who's consuming your product or your processes. Okay. I, I would say with respect to Cheryl, she's first and foremost an incredibly talented executive. Absolutely. Right? She was certainly responsible in a major way for building Facebook, and that engenders certain set of behaviors, and she's acting as right. a very successful executive defending the company organization she helped build in a major way. So I'm not surprised at all, and I think her actions are indicative of the successful person right. she is. No, I only raise it because she, it, this, there's been a backlash and a backlash to the backlash, and it's very interesting. And I, look, I'm a, I'm 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 a man in my 40s, so I, I, it's hard <laughs> it's hard to talk about. But specifically among women, even more so, I think to some degree than than men in terms of the writing and the commentary that you've heard about this issue. And given that I know that you're so focused uh, on uh, women-led businesses, uh, women leaders. That, that, that was really the, the genesis of the question. No, I, I, hear, I hear your point. But as I said, I think she's done a phenomenal job. And I think people have to look at the long haul right. uh, as opposed to one moment in time.